All right, hello everyone. Happy Tuesday, uh, happy October. I'm trying not to get, I keep getting a worse shadow on my face. <laughs> um, we are back uh, for Old Reader, New Reader. We're continuing our spooky month. I'm once again joined by Gabby. Gabby, thank you for joining me again this of month. Of course, thank you again for having me. Of course. Take off spooky season. Absolutely, and of course, every October uh, of Old Reader, New Reader since we started, we've always done spooky books. I think October like three years ago is when we started doing weekly shows by accident because we were doing like every other week. And like, well, for October, let's do it every week. And that never stopped. <laughs> so we've been here every week for like oh, three perfect. years. Um, but as tradition, we always read a Junji Ito book. Um, so I know that Cycle Cleveland popped in before the show started. It was like <laughs> over your new reader for a book that just came out, which I understand. <laughs> um, but the truth is I've run out of like, I mean, there's a ton of Junji Ito books, but we've we've reviewed the big three this past few years. I've reviewed some of the others on other channels. Um, so I wanted to read one that I hadn't read yet, so it'd be fresh. Yeah. Um, and I knew nothing about this going in. So unfortunately, we're both new readers, but I would say that I at least, I'm at least an older Junji Ito reader, and you have recently read yeah. Uh, in addition to Sensor, also Uzumaki for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. So before I read Sensor, I read Uzumaki because I kind of wanted to get a sense of his writing and I loved it. I want to read all of his books. He's a genius. Um, yeah, I devoured it. It was awesome. I'm so glad to hear that because there's something about his him and his work, especially Uzumaki, which starting it off, I think is a perfect like starter. So for people who are watching this, um, Jade and we can talk about only merge in the building at the end of the show because I will definitely want to talk about that. Um, um, absolutely recommend everything Junji Ito does, except for no, no more human or whatever. No longer, um, no human. longer human, is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah, that was not for me. Um, but everything else I've, I've truly, truly enjoyed. Um, if you're new to Junji Ito at all, I still recommend listening to us talk about the book. There will be some spoilers, but I guarantee. I, no matter what I say, no matter what we say or discuss about this book, is not going to spoil your Junji Ito experience. That if you're aware of his work, it's very hard to exactly spoil it because there's so much just randomness. Um, I've always described him as like the kind of Lovecraft version of like, <laughs> he's like Lovecraft for, yes, thank you. Uh, Lovecraft, but, it, it, but the Japanese Lovecraft. Thank you, Felix. Love, love letter Lovecraft, Ito at his best. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you who are aware of Lovecraft, it's more of just like not a typical horror, not typical in what we've seen, not uh, typical stereotypes um, like Lovecraft. Junji Ito takes things that like you wouldn't think were scary. or It's like he takes an item in his head and he's like, okay, how can I take this one insignificant thing and blow it up in such a way that it, it completely envelops a person, completely messes up a whole like, town village country whatever yeah like create um, a whole world based on it yeah. yeah and it totally warps your understanding of how the world should work uh which as you have seen uzumaki and as we are seeing in censor um so that is the book we're talking about today censor um you can see I have it too pretty foil and it has a good face feel i would touch it to my face but uh this hair which is barely uh here today is carefully crafted um but it's wonderful um but like like uzumaki and unlike some of other junji ito's works uh this is like a centralized story so um uh, you haven't seen as much yet but uzumaki of course was like it had a consistent theme throughout mm -hmm. uh censor does as well some of other junji ito's books are collected um, and like anthologies or short stories of his and not so much like a consistent theme. Um, I will say that with the name censor, this is not what I was expecting. Oh, yeah, me too. I don't know what I was expecting, me but too. it certainly wasn't like hair that comes out from like uh, eruptions and lava. Is that a thing? I don't know if anybody at home know. has looked this up. I didn't know when I was looking at the cover that it was hair, that it was yeah. supposed to be hair. I didn't really know what to think about it. I just kind of, just went after with reading Uzumaki, I was just like, you know, I don't really know what's going on, but we're just going to read it. <laughs> I didn't really like think too deeply of it. But after reading it, you figure out like what's going on with the cover. And inside is pretty too, the 
inside the dust oh, jacket. Oh, it's so nice. I didn't even realize. Here, let me highlight you while it. you're holding that up. Oh. Just see, show okay. everybody. <laughs> yeah. It's sorry. so cool. <laughs> you have to say sorry. Well, um, sorry if I if I didn't, like, angle it right. Oh, no, it's perfect. It. Um, so I guess the best way to talk about this book is in parts. Okay. Um, because really every part is so distinct and different. Yeah, that's a good approach. Um, and sets up everything else. So um, for the beginning of the book, and uh, I have forgotten everyone's names and everything's names, but basically we start in this mountain in Japan. And because I have the page open, it's Mount Sengoku. You're welcome. I held it up. So this chapter one, Angel I'm going to follow along with you. Which is um, setting up the rest of the book. So we start off um, with this girl kind of wandering into this area. Um, <laughs> Jaden, that is a Zelda shield in the background. There's also a Buster sword back there too. Um, so <laughs> she wanders into this mountain area and it's, I, I guess like there was an eruption, but it was decades ago. So it's almost like she mm -hmm. kind of crossed into like a time period that she wasn't meant to be in, in a way, sort of. Right. Um, but she comes to Mount Sengoku and the the mountain itself had had erupted decades ago and out of the volcanic ash wasn't really ash so much as it was like these like what looked like pieces of hair little strands of hair thin strands of hair yeah and they call it angel hair or volcanic hair which she says uh, volcanic hair is made from strands of lava so it's actually really hard but the hair that she was touching this golden hair feels like hair so already, like, you haven't read Tomie yet, but it's giving me Tomie vibes because there's things about her hair and the way it attaches to you. And okay. so I was like, what is happening here? I have to read that one. <laughs> so um, to give a visual, which you can kind of barely see, but you see all of these, like, lines in here, which, you know, if you've lived with pets in your house, it's like PTSD for just pet hair. <laughs> I like the way he draws them, too. Like, I like the way that he makes the hair like kind of scenic yeah and, and blend with the in, like nature well just his detail work is always incredible so pretty um but she wanders into this village this town and the people have all been kind of like blessed by this hair they talk about angel hair they've been blessed and she they've expected her to come they've prophesied that she is going to come to their village and all these villages have little strands of this angel hair that sticks to their heads because it sticks to their heads, they're able to like connect with the deeper questions of the universe or whatever. Um, and they all worship the like these hairs and like this the feeling of connecting to the universe. Um, yep, literal worship. Literally. Yeah. Worship. And that's what they the word sensors comes in because they talk about how this is how they sense everything. Um, and they also worship what who they refer to as Lord Miguel. They, and it's somebody who was there decades ago when the town had it like was taken over originally the town that was there that like the eruption took away and so they all think they're trying to worship this lord miguel but actually it's this creepy person bah. and we don't know what that is yeah um and at the end of it she comes out of it with beautiful golden hair similar to the volcanic hair the angel hair so she comes out of this like in a cocoon she's discovered she's like survived this volcanic ash and she comes out looking like this so chapter one thoughts i guess because there's a <laughs> lot to one thoughts yeah. okay um so i wasn't really surprised by the hair being the focus of like this chapter and just a main theme of this book just because after reading Uzumaki you can see how he took a spiral and made it you know this really big element of this story um so yeah I wasn't surprised at all and I like how he kind of made it something that is a part of like kind of whimsical how she looks really whimsical and like how the hair is supposed to be something that's tempting and and that everyone worships um, but 
like, you know, like most books that we've been reading, most of the spooky books, I really didn't know where this was going at all. Um, but I really wasn't surprised yeah. by the hair at all. Um, but I, the fact that she's kind of like, just doesn't really know what's happening. And then you see her role in the, the book, like, and it kind of, it's just weird, not weird, but from the beginning, you kind of see how uh, things set the tone and how everything changes for this one character from the beginning to the end. Um, uh, but yeah, I thought it was good. And, you know, we're going to follow along with her more, but um, already, like, compared to some of his other works, because, like, it's different from his short stories, but his long run things, like, Uzumaki, Tomie, uh, Gyo have a lot of the same storyline throughout. But he loses himself a lot sometimes in those stories if they're too long. Um, but I think already he he grounds everyone very well from the beginning to the end, which we'll get to uh, a little bit better than I think he's done some other things. I think it's very easy to like there are characters that are very easy to hold on to and follow. Although I do miss some of the like how Uzumaki has a little short story extra ones, you know? Yeah, it's I like how like that. things get wacky. Yeah, I do miss that. Because it was like the same characters and the same theme, but just little mini stories that connected, but weren't, but were almost kind of like you could read them by themselves, but they all connected very well, which I liked about that book a lot. So in the next chapter, we're introduced to this reporter. Um, and already, this is such a little thing, but um, as a as a longtime Juju Ito fan, I can already tell, and I think people at home could as well, that his art style has already matured and changed so much. Um, a lot of his characters are much more distinct than I feel like they have been in previous works of really? his. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, just even this, this, it's just this, this, even this guy, I feel like he's so distinct. Like, Ito's really good, but sometimes he used to kind of um, fall prey to what um, Chris and I referred to as same face syndrome. Where oh, okay. a lot of the people look very similar. Right. So you see the same faces often, which I do not see in this book. And he's already, that's just me nitpicking. Ito's perfect. But I can perfect. see the growth. Perfection. Okay. He's perfection. Um, so we're introduced to the reporter. And he's a reporter that doesn't really have a lot going for him. But as he was flying in, he saw this really weird cloud and wanted to investigate. And he can't find anything about it. There's no things about like storms or anything. So he's like, well, um, I'm going to figure out where this cloud is. And he goes into this forest, of course, probably right near where the other one was, Mount Sengoku. And he meets our um, our girl, our golden hair girl. chosen one. Kyoko Byakuya. Um, and follows her. But of course, ends up getting pulled into, uh, you're kidding, another cult. Of course. So many cults. <laughs> um, oh, Bert, that's a good question. Just read this last week. Is volcanic hair a real thing? I don't know. I'm dying to know if anyone in the chat wants to keep this oh, tab open no and idea. hang out with us and go look it up. I'm very curious. <laughs> because it just seems like it would be like him to hear about it and make a whole story about it. You know? It also shows that he has done his research prior, if volcanic hair is real, um, and then kind of made it like a, fan a, a fantastical kind of story oh, yeah. about it, which is cool. Um, there is so much cult activity. So they run into this cult, who's and it's led by, it's called the Indigo Shadow, and it's a supra mysticism group. So they want to connect to the secrets of the universe and they figure out that they can do that by meditating through Kyoko Byakuya. So they have attached her to this almost like crucifix looking thing. There's a lot of like Christianity ish things mm -hmm. and they want to like reach this level of clairvoyance. And because they've been doing this, create this cloud in the sky and the cloud to me, I kept thinking they would do something with it. It looks like a brain. It does. Actually, really, yeah, it does. And so I kept thinking they would do something with that, which makes sense because, like, some of the like angel hairs kind of look like neuron fibers to me. I'm probably looking too much into it, but I mean that's a good observation. I, I didn't think that when I saw it, but that's good that you mentioned that. Um, but ultimately, 
you know, ends in his sort of doom because this like big weird brain cloud thing like spreads. Everything when goes on fire. Kyoko Byakuya's eyes are like, you know, and then everyone else's eyes are like, I could describe that better. Yeah, it's all based on meditation, which is crazy. Like the energy <laughs> that uh, the energy that is like, you know, being used to meditate and to see into the future causes this crazy disaster. Um, and of course, she, you know, everybody in the cult's destroyed, and he, the reporter, loses her again. Which I also like because this is something you'll, you realize as you read on, but typically, like, when someone meets your, like, female mystical character, or, like, whatever the big, not bad, but the big source of, like, I don't know, craziness is from, they get, like, obsessed with it in, like, a really yeah. unhealthy way. But he is super chill. I mean, he's like he's interested and he's following the case. But there's only like one case, like one bit, which we'll get to, right? That he like loses it. Mm-hmm. We can but- we can't really compare. Well, we can compare him, I guess, to uh, the what is it, the psychologist's son? Yeah, right. Who who is like the complete opposite of that? Because you're saying that the reporter is interested, but not super interested to the point where he just like goes insane but there is a point where he does so you, you think that he's more sane but then there's another character who is you know becomes and let's let's go about. ahead and jump and talk about him because that's okay. that's next right yeah because he, he starts doing research on Kyo- uh, kyoko because basically mm-hmm. they found her before all this cult stuff mm-hmm. so before the cult stuff she was taken in by this psychiatrist because she had forgotten who she was and the psychiatrist from the same town that was burned because he also has a piece of gold hair, as we figure out. Right. So they're studying her, trying to help her through hypnotherapy. Um, I forget to hear my dog. Sorry about that. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, give me one second. If you don't okay. mind scribing just a little bit for that, I'm just going to let her in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, in this part of the story, uh, Kyoku, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I hope so. Um, she has amnesia and the psychologist kind of takes her in. Um, well, the psychologist and, uh, his son take her in and try to give her like this neurotherapy, um, to kind of help her. And then madness ensues with that, which Maddie will help me discuss when she comes back. <clears throat> okay, she's back. I'm back. Also, I <laughs> I totally spilled this drink everywhere, which is not a new thing for old reader, new What reader. drink? What drink? Uh, is it? um, I'm curious. <laughs> it's a, a Jack Daniels berry punch. Like It's one of those like fruity oh, drinks or whatever. It it's good. very good, but I'm also trying... Uh, I threw a hoodie down, so like, I'm killing my dog. Just drink this off the floor. Okay, so I want to get to the part, so I the part of the book where all of this happens that I was speaking about, so I could talk about it a little bit more in depth. Um, but I basically just said that they found her with um, amnesia, so they were doing like kind of uh, neurotherapy on her to try to get her to they uh, the psychologist's son. I think his name was Yukio. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, if that's um, what his name is, you pronounce it right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, He's trying to communicate with her, and then in the in his journey to communicate with her, he kind of goes insane. Uh, super obsessed. Yeah, maybe not kind of. He goes insane, like crazy. And of course, she's got like some sort of psychic energy to her, right? Because of the golden hair strands, she's connected to the universe. Freaks out for a moment when she remembers too much. It's like being a beacon for all of the knowledge in the universe, but your brain can't handle it, right? So she's like, yeah, I love, <laughs> yeah, I love seeing when she's like, oh no, I'm seeing something, and it's kind of just like her whole world is breaking down, like literally almost. <laughs> like I can see oh, yeah. everything. I have so much knowledge. I, yeah, and I need to make sure about jumping her because I do want to talk about one other thing, but we need to talk about the creepy guy. But the sun was, I mean, like this is an example creepy. of what she looks like right here. I'm sorry, my cameras. You are a okay. Not the greatest. I'm new to this right here, up here. You can see her. <laughs> but yeah, because uh, he gets so obsessed with her that the way it's like, even when he's laying down, he's thinking about her. 
and he's like, okay, breathe in. Oh, I communicate yeah. with her. And, then and his eyes bulge out. And his, and stuff. his tongue right? comes out. Yeah, and the way he talks about her body is the nastiest thing. Because Junji Ito is really good about not doing a lot of, like, sexualized horror or body horror. Uh, with yeah, the another. exception of, like, a certain book. But <laughs> it's so crazy. His whole face just, like, juts out. And he eventually becomes, he, like, explodes. But man, nothing's nastier than Junji Ito drawing this like engorged tongue. It's the grossest oh, thing. Oh yeah, I can hear the eyeballs coming out. But the t his tongue coming out is so gross. Yeah. And the way he talks about her body and thinks about her, he's like, "Oh, the sweet taste of like the nape of her, of her, her neck. lips and her neck, and yeah, that's weird. Gross." And I was worried for a second because he's talking about to his dad and his dad's like, wait, how have you been treating her? Because I was oh, worried yeah. that maybe he was doing stuff. But I think it was more of a psychic thing. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself because it was gross. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh, that was crazy. Um, I think that's kind of the, po the part in the book where things kind of start to kind of unravel and things yep. start to become kind of crazy and sets the tone for like everyone else. And their effects of uh, this, this woman thing. who, who um, you know, can see, has all the knowledge of the universe and everyone kind of wants to access that knowledge. Um, before we get to the next part, there was, there, was a, there was a way the doctor described her, the dad, not the son, where before she like remembers anything, she's in this state of what he referred to as like a bliss. And the bliss was... It was so eloquent, which is why I had to bring it up, because he, he talks about how it's as if she's in a state of just waking up, where you've just woken up, you feel like this kind of bliss, oh, and yeah. you don't, this innocence, this naivety, naivete, uh, before you, like, recognize the world you're in, kind of come into it. And I was like, that is such a beautiful way to talk about it, because I, I never, like, you understand the feeling, right, when he talks about it. Right. And she's, like, in a constant state of that before they make her remember and then she's like it's all taken away <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. you know um i think it was kind of crazy how you have this woman who is not only you know very physically beautiful and like her physical beauty draws everyone in but the fact that she also is like kind of godlike and has access to all of the knowledge of the world it's just like how does that not only affect people, but how is she affected by everyone trying to just kind of be in her presence in different ways? How overwhelming that must be for someone, you know, just yeah. even having all of the knowledge of the universe in itself is just like, I, who can really picture that? You know? Well, and unlike in other Junjita books, no one's like obsessed with her to the point where they need to kill her because they can't have her. So that's really different. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so as we continue, because he's still trying to find her, um, of course, the way he does is another cult. Who would have thought another cult? All the cults, all the time. That is how this is. Oh, I guess I'm jumping too far because... <laughs> it's okay. Okay, actually, yeah, let's talk. Man, there's so many good bits. I was like, this is short. We'll be so fast. But there's so many so good we bits. Let's go page by page. Okay, before call, there's two <laughs> things to talk about. One, um, she he finds her, almost finds her. Uh, I think almost runs into her. Just but misses her by a little bit because he goes to this cafe on a cliff because he dreams about her. That she jumps off of this cliff. This is the reporter. The reporter, right. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and he goes and he follows her to this this cafe by a cliff, which is great because I'm, I'm going to give you some extra like uh, using my undergraduate degree because <laughs> um, I studied a lot about uh, suicide in Japan. So spoiler alert, or not spoiler, trigger warning for talking about this for a little bit, the suicide section. Um, but this section is very accurate. So like there are a lot of areas where there is cafes or are there's like phone booths or places nearby cliffs that are like common suicide places and people will set up there in order to have those conversations with people to talk to them so maybe that they won't jump to get them ahead of time and so like that sort of situation he ran into is very common so we were introduced we see kyoko she's kind of standing at the cliff and this woman comes up to her like hey uh, a lot of people jump off here i'm not saying that you are 
but in case you are, would you like to, or like, would you just like to go get a cup, cup, cup of coffee at the cafe and takes her in, which is very sweet. And then the same happens for the reporter who goes looking for her is like the older man who works there goes and gets him. And I was like, yeah, that's such an accurate thing. Like, well, I didn't know that. Thank you for yeah. sharing with everyone. Um, of course, the the gross part of that. There's the normal part. Unfortunately, normal part. The gross stuff is all these bugs. All these oh. bugs are like lemmings, basically. Yeah, they're very fast, they're very jumpy, and they all have the little angel hair, mm-hmm. which wasn't like they never mentioned, but you can bugs see bugs and hair. Ugh. Yeah, gross. <laughs> and it, yeah, if you hate bugs, you'll hate that part, but. <laughs> What was really gross is that they would jump under the feet of people. Mm-hmm. So as you're trying to walk, they, like the bugs just jump on purpose under your foot to get squashed. And they're really gross. And when you step on them like, really closely, you can see the human faces. And they're like the spirits of people that have killed themselves that come back as bugs to like jump under your foot. How genius and gross. Yeah. That oh was. And then, and then how, then we Johnson. see this this really nice lady kind of try to save Kyoko and then see what happens to her with the bugs, like about so her, many bugs. her boyfriend, right? That, Man, so you many know, bugs. I don't know if I should share. I don't, I don't know how much I'm, I should share like spoiler wise. That's okay. But I will say some people in the chat, don't you spoil only murders in the building for other people. All right, don't do it. Is that is that a show or a book? What is I? I uh, it's familiar. a show. It's got it's Selena Gomez. Um, oh yes, okay. Yes. Yeah, I've heard it's that. I've seen so it. So good. The final episode just came out. So, and we're definitely gonna get season two. Unless we've been teased for it. That's awesome. Um, I'm really proud of Selena Gomez. She's a great actress. She's she's getting back into it. She's. Hello, Kyle. Davis. Talk about we were talking about books. Now we're done talking about books because they're very gross. <laughs> Um, yeah, next topic. No bugs. No next bugs, topic. <laughs> Our reporter has a stalker. I was hoping oh she'd be God. even creepier than she was, but she was very creepy. Um, and I the way loved that her, her style. hair was, sh- the way that she was like shaded into in her eyes. Yeah. Oh my God. I feel I'm like she was like trying. the antithesis to Kyoko. Yeah. Because Kyoko's got this like beautiful golden hair. And then we have his like girl. Soft features. <laughs> Just, yeah, very sharp. Very straight hair, very scary looking, but also she's really pretty. I thought I really liked her. Yeah, um, I love pretty, her. But look. very scary. It's a look. <laughs> but, but yeah, she's she's been obsessed with him, and kind of fell off the map for a while and started like stalking him again, and even knew that he was looking for Kyoko, and basically found some sort of way to just like be able to like look through all the mirrors. And so she's created all these traffic accidents so that the mirrors would turn. So basically, it was like you could jump from one mirror to the other and, like, see all through Japan or something and, like, come out of mirrors. Oh, yeah. Very Mirror Master for DC fans out there. Uh, (laughs) um, It was was a nice little break from the story because it comes back, it relates, because, like, uh, she's definitely been affected by the black volcano hair, the stiff kind. Because that also is in the mirrors. But she's beautiful. I was a big fan. Of the big the stalker lady? Yeah. Yeah, I like her. <laughs> she's, she was pretty. She's very pretty. She's very different. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, that sucks for him. Obviously. <laughs> but And then and then there's a part where he says, I got a restraining order. Isn't, didn't he say that? Something yeah. Like, that? like, I got a restraining order, but, like, I don't know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um you know i try my best i went to the police but I, how am i supposed to know i don't even know where she is but i like turned her in <laughs> and well funny. you know yo, yo girl is in the mirrors what are you gonna do and just in case just in case she comes i got a restraining order <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, i thought it was funny but i want to also talk about um the Girl, so the girl who saves who try who saves Kyoko from jumping off the oh mountain. yeah yeah um her uh boyfriend right who dies who kills mm-hmm. himself right uh I think he jumped in front of a train yeah right and then the significance of the bugs after that and then how he comes back as a bug and then starts saying like 
Like, I'm fault. back. It's your fault. You cheated on me. Oh, my God. And then you see this woman as someone who's so nice and caring and, like, about to save someone from committing suicide. And then you see this kind of background. Like, oh. You know. And then she squashes them she's more. She's going through tr- such trauma. <laughs> And then, and then she's like, ah, I gotta get out of here. Because it's like one bug turns into like a whole group All of them. All the bugs. So gross. Every time you move your foot, ten bugs are under your foot. You're like, ah, oh, gross. Uh, uh, you see, no. this book I feel like has a lot. It has a lot. It has hair. Like a lot of different symbols. Hair, oh, yeah. bugs, crucifixes, <laughs> cults, you know. A lot of cults. And you know, just when you think you're done with cults, guess what? You're not. There's more. more. Cults. Because, of course, our guy from earlier who kidnapped her in the beginning isn't dead. He's back, but badly burned and covered in bandages. Oh, no. And, of course, kidnaps her again. It also kidnaps anybody... Actually, that doesn't kidnap her because he's trying. To, he's trying to find her, but kidnaps anyone related to her so they can try everyone, to find anyone her. that's ever spoken to her, encountered her, any in any kind, any form. And they do this very gross thing. Well, they they're all tied up, and then they try to like basically suck the knowledge of of Kyoko out of all of their brains, which you know um, is so just everyday stuff. Just every like, day. Let us meditate to our limits. And <laughs> Wataru, the, the crazy stalker, is like going after our boy, like, we'll finally be one. <laughs> I thought Wataru was the reporter. Oh, sorry. That's what I meant. I, 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 that's what I thought. I, I, so, I don't know. Wataru's <laughs> stalker. Been, yeah. But we get this great glimpse of her and her like true oh, craziness. Linus. Beautiful. Love you it. know, hair for days, that one. And <laughs> we get a weird, this is very interesting, this last bits. Because mm-hmm. we're going through all of this. And they figure out as everyone's sort of dissolving in a very gross way into this like black pit. It looks like they become like, like balls of spaghetti and then melt. <laughs> Horrifying, but also funny at the same time. Yeah, now I kind of want some spaghetti. I'll be real with you. (laughs) Not a big spaghetti fan. I don't know. (laughs) Call me crazy. We're getting to the real. Especially not after reading this. The real talk. But we go back in time. Kyoko somehow takes Wataru, our reporter, back in time to the village that should have been destroyed by the volcano. Somehow displaced in time and space. I wonder how did this happen? I don't know. This just happens. Just happens. I don't think Junji Ito comes knows. back in time. <laughs> I was like, how did this happen? He didn't even know how it happened. So I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And Wataru's just there, but she's there in person, but he's not there in person for reasons. Mm-hmm. And we meet uh, Miguel, AKA dude who looks like Jesus, who's a Christian, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess he's like a Christian missionary to Japan. Yeah, they mentioned him in the beginning, like how he, you know, how his story about how he was a missionary and they kind of they sacrificed him. And then I guess you were kind of went back in time to see how that inf- unfolded. But this time you're seeing the reporter kind of experience it. Watching himself. it all happen, which that part's really mm-hmm. cool. Like if this yeah. were in a show, I think people would really like it the way that they they do that bit. Mm-hmm. And then what's interesting is also that he can, well, Kyoko can talk to him and can see him, but nobody else can. Yeah. And then he's wondering, like, why is everybody ignoring me? Like, what's what's going on? Why is everybody, yeah. like, t- can they not see me? And then she tells him, like, yeah, you know, no one can see you. Like, you're not really here, which was very mind-blowing. And I really like their back and forth because she comes to him and it's like, I've come to the future to meet you. Miguel, who's like led this group. Oh, Miguel, yes. Um, she's like, I survived the eruption. I gained this power. I know that you did this. You gave me this gift of clairvoyance. Why did you? And he's like, I didn't. God chose you. Yeah. 
Like mm-hmm. the tr- and he says the true nature of the universe is darkness. The universe is made of darkness. Oh, I love that. Be, I actually really like that. You can be a point of light in it. Um, which I thought was, re- I really like this back and like the way they talked about the universe in this because, you know, they had that conversation while at the same time, this darkness who we see who shows up or says that they're basically is our cult leader guy, I guess. It's very weird. It's a lot of timey wimey stuff. Um, he kind of reiterates what the, the crazy psychologist son had said. Where he's like, mm-hmm. the universe only exists because I witness it. Because yeah, I am I'm admiring page, it. Yeah. yeah. The universe uh, can exist because I exist. Yeah. Essentially, well, yeah. No, the space, gas, liquid, and stone that exist in the universe essentially do not exist until I sense them. Yeah, that's which I thought was really a really... Bold. Like, even though this book is creepy, that's the point of it, right? But that part was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. See, I can see how people would get behind this. But question, can you hear how loud my dog is being? Is that obnoxious? I'm just, I'm kind of like in my own head making sure I sound good or <laughs> making sure I make okay. sense. I can't, I don't know what my mic picks it. up or not. Um, <laughs> sorry, Kitty, but if you ever see a live show on Tuesdays, we never have any fun announcements. Just uh, announcing our, our love or distaste of a book. <laughs> Um, and we see the true face of this like um, evil face. Basically, it's like it comes back and uh, around. So we have that guy, the cult leader, leading that weird group, is also the face that she had she saw originally in mm. this void uh, when they were all meditating with their like angel hairs or whatever. So there's a lot of weird timing why me stuff happening that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But it's fun. If you like that kind of stuff, I do. Visually pleasing also. Oh, with yeah. With the exception of, you know, very gory, eerie drawings. It's very, very beautiful to look at. Mm-hmm. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if you still have questions about it. Yeah, and at the end, everything pretty much from what you can tell is okay. I mean, we lose Kyoko. And she becomes the light in the darkness. So people can still see the darkness, the scary face, and she will exist there forever as a light that is constantly growing and fighting against it. Which, at its heart, is a very nice story. There's a lot of creepiness in here. Also a lot of pressure like, on the light of the darkness. <laughs> yeah, her, like, a lot her, of pressure. her life was over the minute she walked That's in That's a lot mountain. of pressure to, to deal with. Yeah. Like, reputation we have to uphold, you know? You're taking a squeaky toy away from the dog. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, you know, honestly, I, I really liked how this this wrapped up. I thought it was very solid. Um, I I don't want to rank it in comparison to other of my other books of his. Oh my gosh, she grabbed it again. You jerk. <laughs> um, um, but I I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, me too. The art was great. Is there anything you'd like to add before we get to the rating? Um, uh, you know, uh, one thing I was thinking about was how interesting it was that we didn't follow through the eyes of Kyoko. Kyoko. Mm-hmm. We followed through the eyes of Wataru. Um, which I actually read, like I said, I read the afterword. And originally... Yeah, da- please Junji talk about Ito, that. Junji Ito was uh, originally gonna make uh kyoko the narrator but then kind of liked the mis the the mysterious aspect of her character and kind of just let her just you know be this otherworldly being and then have you read her through well view her through the reporter's eyes and then he even mentioned how the characters kind of escaped him uh, escaped out of his control, which I thought was interesting because I was talking to Maddie about this previously before the show that I felt I only read Uzumaki before this, um, but I felt like that one was a little bit more uh, structured. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's bad in a bad way. I'm just saying that uh, it was like you have the spiral as the main theme, the main kind of element that we're exploring in this, you have a lot of different, you have a lot of other things. 
and the characters definitely do things that you like. I, I mean, I didn't expect this. And then you see a lot of visuals that you weren't expecting. Um, and there was a lot more in it. So he says, you know, the characters kind of escaped my control. I kind of just let them do what they want. But, you know, I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Which I sometimes I like, you know, you like that. You don't want everything to be so planned, and you know, this is how the story is yeah. going to go. Um, so I felt like this was just kind of, you know, things flow as I write. Well, I like that he's honest about it. And plus, I mean, the man puts out so many stories, and all this art is very like I want to read them all, everything, and beautiful. everything. See, now you're one of us. It's it's a yeah. it's a spot. It's a spiral. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, yeah, but. There's something so comforting about it. Like, it puts me in a good mood, weirdly. Oh, yeah, me too. I felt very... Uh, I think in one of your shows, you mentioned that you felt very com comforted or yeah. comfortable reading Junji Ito, which I actually felt similarly. Uh, There's something about it. Something about it. I can't really explain it. Kill this dog. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to kill her dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I had to yell at her. Um... <laughs> She's very antsy and wants to pick up everything out hmm. uh, off the table, everything down here, which is not good because we are in my uh, comic book basement. Um, so I was thinking about my rating. Um, it helps people. Uzumaki for me is a 10 out of 10. Uh, no longer humans, like a, like a three to me for other reasons. Um, I would put this at a seven or an eight. I'm leaning towards an eight because I feel like from like, it's very well composed. It like has a start and a finish. And I think he, he wraps that up pretty well, but I do agree that in the middle, he gets kind of lost with some things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I lean more towards seven or eight, maybe I should say seven, seven and a half. Yeah. I'll say seven. I, I will agree with that. I really yeah. enjoyed it, but I do think that like, there was some, I think there's some more fun things he, he could have done mm -hmm. to add I in there or consistency. Yeah. Yeah, I think overall it was a solid story, but maybe when you're reading it, maybe there are things that you could, things that he could have explained better, maybe, or, you know, more, I guess just after reading Uzumaki, I expected just kind of one, one specific theme, one specific element that was really explored, and there, there was, there, there were a few that were really focused on, but um, I think overall it was, it was good. I enjoyed it, the art, everything about it. it I thought it was good. Seven and a half is good. That's you a good heard it rating. here, folks. It's a good rating. Uh, now we have time to chill. What's up, guys? <laughs> we read the book. Now it's chill time. What's some comic book stuff? What's happening? Um, I will say, Jaden, you watched a lot of things that I have watched recently, uh, especially Tokyo Revengers, which I want you to watch, Gabby, because no one else is watching it. I want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. What is that on? Okay. It's on HBO Max. Okay. I have that. It's an anime. Here's the premise. Okay. Um, you can watch it elsewhere, but uh, HBO Max has it dubbed, which is convenient for me. Do I speak Japanese? Yes. Do I still want to be lazy and watch dubs? Yes. <laughs> it's a good dub. But this guy, uh, he's like, I don't know, late 20s. He's not doing great with his life or whatever. Um, something happens and he's sent back in time to his middle school days. Right before he gets, Ooh. he ends up being bullied by this like gang for the rest of his life or whatever, and he has an opportunity to change things in the past, but only, only twelve days before the whatever day it is. So like for, it would be say like October nineteenth. It'd be that same date, but twelve years ago. So like the past also moves with him as he goes back and forth. And he's also trying to stop like some things happening to his friends and like somebody dying in the future. But he goes back and forth and sees how it changes or what didn't change. Learn about the new timeline and then go back. It is so good. It sounds I'm going to have to read the manga. Ooh. So I, I saw Squid Game as well. Ta -ta. Amazing. It's, you know, a popular opinion for a reason. Yeah. And I, I had the pleasure of seeing Dune early. I'm so jealous. Phenomenal. Everybody, go see it. If you can go to the theater, go see it because I feel like the whole experience will just be so amplified. Yeah. Um, but just watch it anyway. It's such a beautiful movie. Ten out of ten. I am very excited to watch it because I, 
I've never seen Dune the original movie. I've never read the book. But from what I hear from people, I don't think I want to read the book. Um, <laughs> but I did watch the mini series. I don't know what it was on, but like when I was growing up, there were so many like mini series. Uh, now it's just like I think they just call that something else. It's very popular now, but at the time it was it was very different. And so I watched like, the Dune mini series and like the Tenth Kingdom and that kind of stuff, and I really liked it. <gasps> James, oh, Liar Game is so good. I also recommend that, Gabby, because if you like Squid Game, Liar Game is like a perfect. Oh my god! All of these like traumatic uh, games. Ah, uh, there's so many good like recommend like. Japan has so many good like manga or anime or live action show versions of things that are very similar. They don't all end up in death. They're not all kill games like Battle Royale or anything, but um, man, Liar Game. Ugh. It's so good. There's a live action show. There's a manga. It's all perfect. It's just so many Ugh. things I want to watch and read. It's just, it's so overwhelming, but it also is so fun to think about. It's just it just means you have a lot of like fun stuff to read later. I still have interests. so many series that like I haven't read that my friends are like, oh, why haven't you read this yet? And to me, that's just fun. Like it's yeah. There's people in in any fandom. I think anybody here watching this knows. Um, it happens in comics. It happens in if you're a fan of Star Wars or video games, and they're like, oh, you haven't read this, like the gatekeeping way. Mm hmm. But how much more fun is it to be like, oh my god, you haven't read this? Mm -hmm. uh, you are in for a treat. I'm so excited for you. Like, that's a much better way to see it. My dog absolutely has my mic in her mouth. Um, <laughs> thank you for bringing that to me. Thanks so much. And you know, uh, the satisfaction of recommending someone something and then them loving it and then uh, being able to speak about it with them, I'm sure like well, I have experienced it. It's so satisfying and such an amazing feeling. And then you pat yourself on the back too for recommending it. And you're like, I did that. I did that. I think oh, that's just doing? Kristen's whole life where she's just like, <laughs> hey, I read this and I liked it. I'm like, okay. And then I read it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Kristen, you were right. Yeah, I went, I bought, uh, Kristen posted on her Instagram a book, the book Squad, which yeah. I went and bought. Because I want to read it. <laughs> That's it looks, also like, my list. So uh, the cover looks so cute, and I, I feel like I would love it. So I went and bought it because of Kristen. Because I, I think her recommendations are solid. So are yours. Oh, always. Maddie. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and definitely watch Only Murders in the Building, which we have a couple people that are talking about it. Because if you like murder mysteries at all, I do. I do. And plus Steve Martin oh, and Dana Carvey. Ugh. Ugh. Genius. Um, I'll never forget the day my wife told me she loved Batman Earth 1 after I recommended it to her. I teared up. Oh. Jane, I love getting updates about you and your wife and what she's reading. It's wonderful. Well, I guess we can wrap it up early only because uh, my dog is very antsy right now. So. Okay. Um, but thank you uh chat for hanging out thank you gabby for hanging out well thank you thank you everyone for watching um i'll be back next week with a hellboy book i don't know if i've gotten a message about which book patreon chose uh i'm sure james can tell me i need to know so i can read it in a week i guess um, hopefully i'll make time for that um i got my, my vaccine booster shot today so if you're able to um i recommend you um oh well thank you for being here oh, thanks so much <laughs> um i hope you all have a good night uh if you're watching this video hope you like or if you're watching this video hope you like it if you're watching later i uh, hope you comment down below tell us what you thought about censor by junji ito um gabby is new to junji ito she only read uzumaki and censor so please give some recommendations um please don't recommend no longer human <laughs> um <laughs> Anything else, though? Um, uh, real quick. Oh, man. Okay. Real quick recommendation for you. I'm going to keep it spooky. 
but not horror, only because we're about to end the show. Um, but I'm going to recommend Pumpkin Heads. I just read that also. I've been on a reading trip lately. <laughs> so if you want a book that, that feels so like cute. fall. It was so cute. Oh my that's God. lighthearted and not spooky. Pumpkin Heads is it. It was really good. Or Sheets. Pumpkin Heads or Sheets. sheets. You have, um, you know, fall Halloween adjacent things that are not scary. All right. Uh, I'll end off with that. Thank you all so much. Um, and we'll see you all Thank next you. week. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night.